and a good morning to you. Yeah, and as the seasons change, I mean, upon us is that boating season that we are so familiar with, and this is a familiar sight. These Mustang Survival PFDs. How do they make them, and how do they decide what's needed? We've got those details coming up next, live from Burnaby. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And we're just upon that season, of course, boating season, and a lot of people, Jill, recognize these. Of course, many people see these, these Mustang, Mustang Survival uh, PFDs, but they may not realize that you're a local company. Exactly, yeah. Our first floater coat was designed and launched out of Gastown, actually, about 49 years ago. Wow, and you offer more than just this style here. How do you decide what's needed? Well, what we usually do is we have a research and development department who will do research to figure out a need. We have uh, market research that will figure out the need from the customer side of things, and um, we pull those needs together to actually figure out a product. So something like this here, what, how did that come about? Um, so with this product, the need came from the customer of needing something that was more comfortable to wear, and we're always looking to increase wear rate, because when you wear your PFD, you're safe. That's, that's how it works, and so that was that specific need to make something more comfortable, breathable, not so grimy on the skin with kind of nylon. And so there's basically foam inside? There is that how that works, or something that's a flotation? Yeah, that's actually okay. a floater coat. There's foam that keeps you okay. floating, and there's um, nice breathable fabric on the outside to help wick that moisture off your body. Okay, and then something like this here. Where did that need come from, and how did it come about? That need was more around the comfort of wearing um, a lightweight. You don't even notice you have it on PFD, and uh, yeah, so the materials on there make it about 20% lighter than the average inflatable. Excellent. So once it's in someone's head, how does it come to the point, Garrett, that you can sit there and, or Jared, I should say, <laughs> I knew I get it wrong, <laughs> that you can sit there and present it to somebody to get developed? So once we have an understanding or a better understanding of the user needs, um, we'll document that and then we'll start into a conceptualization stage where we'll start doing some illustrations, high level concept drawings, um, not a great amount of detail at that point. Um, then we'll move towards Illustrator Flats uh, to s help us sort of identify a visual direction for the product. And then we go to prototype stage. And then stage. we move to prototype shop. And that's what yeah. we're going to do, be doing coming up in the next segment here at Mustang Survival. For more details on the products they offer, go to mustangsurvival.com. Mustang Survival located right here in Burnaby. Once they have the concept, what happens next? How do they put together the prototype? We've got those details coming up next on BT. Stay with us live from Burnaby. Here at Mustang Survival, and uh, kudos to Freddie, our audio guy, who just had to play a little Mustang, Sally. You knew that had to come, right, Jared? Yeah, I was say, it's inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> it sure is. Now, we talked about kind of concept. We talked about the fact then it goes to something like a drawing, where people could sort of envision what it's going to be like. And now we're into the prototype. What are you doing here? So basically, we have a uh, preliminary pattern that our uh, techs have developed for us, and we're cutting out a rough prototype, um, which we would then take two layers of this uh, uh, urethane coated nylon and we'd weld them together to develop a bladder. Excellent, so I'm going to make my way over to that right now where Jill, this is essentially, once it's been cut, it ends up something like this. Exactly. How important is the color? The color, we've done some studies around the color and the conditions of being on the water and this is actually incredibly visible when you're on, on the water as compared to kind of the standard traditional gold yellow that are in typical inflatables. And this is, by the way, inflated as we speak right now. Mm -hmm. How do you actually sort of piece it together then? So the urethane that Jared mentioned is on the back of here and actually like a glue when it gets heated up. So when the two are pressed together and heated, um, it basically just glues it together. Excellent. And what kinds of things are you testing for at this stage of the prototype? So the early prototype phase, we're looking for how well it fits, how comfortable it is, if it actually floats, basically. And that's pretty much it for that point. Okay. Thanks very much, Jill. Mm -hmm. And Jared, let's go to the point now where we got to attach that very important logo. What do you have here? So this is our uh, heat press. And what we're doing is we're going to attach a heat transfer logo to what might be a finished panel. And it's quite busy here right now, by the way, too. You've got a whole a ton of employees. Um, Jill is an engineer. What's your role here? So I'm one of the product designers on the team. Um, so I definitely address more of the emotional needs, the visual aesthetic of the products. Um, and um, right now I'm just looking at finishing, you know, one of the panels that might go on a PFD. So. Oh, very cool. Well, they're doing lots of great work here at Mustang Survival. For more details on everything they do here at Mustang Survival, you can, of course, check out their website, mustangsurvival.com. And here it comes. Just, we'll see how you do here, Jared. <laughs> Michelle, no pressure for Jared here right now, right? Oh, oh. Oh, success. You get to keep your job for today. Bosses are watching. Sounds good. Perfect. <laughs> We're going to end with a splash sound as we design test here again at Mustang Survival. We're going to test out the immersion suit coming up next on BT. Yes, we are testing out the uh, Mustang.
a survival immersion suit, and this is truly a survival suit meant for what, Jill? It's meant for if you've got to get off your boat, it's on fire, they're sinking, uh, it's getting off your boat as fast as you can and into the ocean or lake or wherever you end up being. Okay, so give me a little bit of the lay of the suit here. What are we looking at? Yeah, so you can see it's really bright. This is coming right out of our visibility study, how this really bright color is much more visible, easier to find. That's what you're hoping for. Um, we've got a water-activated light, a whistle. This fun little tube here will actually blow up a big pillow on your back. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got a harness so you can strap yourself up to other buddies with this buddy line uh, over here. And um, yeah, there's a nice foam thermal lino liner so you're going to float. Uh, you're going to stay nice and toasty. Let's and get all zipped up because we're going to test this out. I know we are Cheryl. <laughs> we Cheryl already in there. Uh, so ideally, I'm going to stay completely dry and I'm going to be able to float Absolutely. and uh, be comfortable until I'm rescued. Completely. That's yeah. okay. So I just go in. Bombs away. Just go for it. Jump. Go for it, yeah. All right. Here I go. <laughs> that, that was great. Did it work okay? Good job, yeah. Okay, so we're looking at visibility differences here as well, right? Yeah, so the old suit is what Cheryl has on. That's kind of the standard industry color that most suits are made out of. And your suit, you can see, is much more visible now. Um, yeah, when you're in the water particularly and kind of in overcast conditions, that's where uh, that suit really comes in handy. It's surprising how buoyant it is. Like I'm truly, you know, normally when you're floating, you're thinking, okay, I gotta be laying back like this, but truly I am floating without any effort here. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, quite a bit of buoyancy in there, and that's the whole point. You want to be able to relax and stay calm until help comes. Okay, so I'd say this prototype seems to be working just fine, although I'm just looking for the point that I'm not down in the water. <laughs> but for more details on Mustang Survival, you can go to mustangsurvival.com. I'm sure I wish last year. <laughs> We are here at Mustang Survival here on the manufacturing floor where we are talking quality assurance up next on BT. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here at Mustang Survival where, Jill, we've been going through all the different stages. What stage are we at right now? So this is the final stage of the product development process. This is launching the product. So it's actually in production, being built, and ready to go out to customers. So what is Gavino doing right now? So Gavino is doing some leak testing on a wrist seal for a dry suit to make sure it's good and dry before it actually goes into a product. Okay, and this is super important because this is what you do here. Let's back up a little bit. Where I was in uh, a type of suit as well, what exactly is happening here? So this is a full leak test on a dry suit. We 100% leak test all of our dry suits uh, to make sure that when you're out and using it and you need it, it's not going to leak. This is an important thing. Thank you very much, Jill, here at Mustang Survival, which a lot of people, Carlo, may be surprised to know that it's a local company. Uh, how important is that to you guys? It is a very important aspect for us. Um, we take pride in of the things that we're doing here. Um, we have 120 people and then we're really happy to be a local manufacturer here in the province of British Columbia. I love it. What are we looking at up here? What we're looking at right here is the samples that we have made in the past and what we're doing also right now and also in the future. So anything that you see a green green suit there in, a, in an aircraft carrier that's made by Mustang Survival, made here in the good province of British Columbia. And how many people are employed here? There are about 120 people employed here in our facility. Obviously working very, 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 very hard. Uh, for more details, of course, on Mustang Survival, you can go to mustangsurvival.com where they are testing the heck out of this suit right here. Stay with us. You're watching BT on this Friday morning. Russ Lacate has your weekend forecast coming up next.